everybody, it's Marco here with another one for you. I'm in the insane area of Dundas Square here in Toronto. It's a little bit more insane today because the weather has gotten warmer. Part of the reason I'm out today, I've been kind of avoiding coming out because it's been cold. I've also been doing some paid work, but I am out here taking advantage of the weather to shoot some footage for another Dehancer video. When I say another Dehancer video, last year I did a video about the Dehancer software. If you don't no Dehancer, it's a film emulation software. It's uh, pretty advanced and I really like it. I think the results look fantastic. I only really do videos like this for products that I use and I endorse. Um, and I am kind of endorsing Dehancer. I did sort of get paid for the first video because they gave me a copy of Dehancer and that uh, license is still good for the upgrade to Dehancer and that's why I'm doing this number two video for Dehancer to uh, take a look at what they've done with uh, the new Dehancer and that's uh, Dehancer version 7.1.2 for OFX. For OFX meaning you can use it with DaVinci Resolve. As you may know I'm a DaVinci Resolve editor and they also now have profiles for the A6700 which I'm shooting with right now. So I'm going to do a little bit of shooting and then we'll take the footage back to the studio and uh, see if we can dehance it. All right, catch you later. I'm reinventing myself. I'm me and nobody else. Ooh, I can't help but smile. <laughs> yes, I do have the t-shirt. What a fanboy. And when the Dehancer people said they'd be sending me the t-shirt, I said I wouldn't do this episode until the t-shirt arrived. I have a feeling that the first one got lost in the mail somewhere um, because I had to request it again. Uh, so it's been several months waiting for the t-shirt, but maybe it was a sort of blessing in disguise because they managed to get out the Hanser 7.1.2 in the meanwhile. And uh, thankfully my license from uh, last year when I did the first video uh, still applies. I'm not really sure about like their other plugins and how their upgrade program works because the answer pro is essentially a um, a package that combines all their other uh, plugins because when you go through the Dehancer Pro software um, sort of um, the different sections can be broken up into their separately available plugins uh, as well so if there's uh, a case where you're finding you're only using one part of the uh, demo if you download the demo um, maybe you want to just buy the one uh, part it's a sort of hefty price tag I guess if you want to buy the lifetime version but then you can also uh, go on a subscription program which uh, I wouldn't really do I try to avoid anything like that I try to keep my monthly expenses low uh, so uh, but it is a, a kind of hefty up Front price. So full disclosure, although they did send me a fancy t-shirt, I did not get paid to do this video. All these opinions are my own. The Dehancer people have absolutely no say in what I say in this video. Although last year's video, they did sort of pay me in a way because they did send me a um, copy of the software for review. That was like a temporary license. And then once the video went out, they actually um, sent me a full permanent license key. So I do have a lifetime license for Dehancer, which is super cool. Uh, and I'll continue doing these videos provided I keep loving this software, which I do. <laughs> uh, anyway, so all that stuff you just saw there from me getting on the streetcar all the way up till that shot of those bicycles covered in ice. By the way, that wasn't real ice. Uh, they did this fantastic job. I think it was like a Coors Light uh, promo. They call it the, the Chill Train promo. <laughs> uh, they 
covered a bunch of stuff in this fake ice and I thought it looked pretty cool. The film profile that I used, or the film emulation that I used, I should say, um, I used the, uh, the profile, the camera profile for the A6700, uh, which I had mentioned that they include now, which is very cool. The actual film emulation that I was using uh, for all that stuff at the beginning, if you were wondering, uh, is the Kodak Vision 3 emulation. Kodak Vision 3 500T. Um, when you see a letter at the end of a film emulation or, or a film stock uh, for that matter, if it's a T or a D, that denotes whether it's for tungsten or for daylight. The thing about the Vision 3 500T is that it can also be balanced for, um, for daylight as well. The film that uh, something is shot on is your negative film and then it's printed to positive film for projection. The uh, projection film is uh, 2383, but that film stock is the stock that a lot of my favorite uh, films have been shot on. Uh, so uh, it, it's uh, my favorite. I will take you through the process of how to use the software and I'll also uh, cover some of the new stuff that they've put in. So right, let's get to it. So this is the shot we'll be working with. This is local creator Jesse. Him and his buddy Eric have a channel called GC Cars if you want to check it out. Jesse's just in the middle of creating this hyperlapse, as people often do at Dundas Square because you've got all this action going on. Makes for a really cool hyperlapse. Uh, so all I've done to this clip so far is add a little bit of stabilization. I'm usually shooting handheld, so just a little bit of stabilization. Anyway, now we're just going to hop into the color page. And I'm going to add a couple of nodes here. I'm just right clicking and adding serial nodes. Right click, serial node. Normally I'll add a fourth node as well for sharpening between the first and second node. In this case, I'm not because for film emulations, I mean, film just isn't that sharp. So I don't want to add any sharpening. And so here in the third node, I'm just going to do a search for enhance, drag that onto the node here, and then rather than Rec. 709 because I know what camera I was using and I was also shooting S-Log3, I'm going to choose Sony in here and then I'm going to choose the A6700 and I was using S-Log S Gamut 3 Cine. You'll see the colors changing already here in our viewer. Stuff like exposure compensation, if you didn't do this in your camera, you can make some uh, of those changes here. Uh, kudos to the developers because they've really taken close cues from the actual film process. And so you have all these controls here. I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, I just want to give you like a quick overview. I did go into a little bit more detail with this stuff in my um, video from last year, if you want to check that out. So for the film, uh, like I had mentioned, one of my favorites is the Vision 3 and I'm going to grab the Vision 3 500T. So remember T is for uh, tungsten. So you've got the control to uh, push and pull the film like you do in real life. The compression here is basically what it does is it basically pulls your footage in at your highlights and at your shadows. You'll see that film has this look where um, things are compressed toward the mid uh, range. And uh, that's basically what this simulates. Uh, this is for expanding the range uh, between those points of compression. So, uh, and here you can choose the print film. I'm going to go with that Kodak 2383. A very popular print film. I'm just gonna pick up the exposure just a little bit in here. I find that doing it in the print film is a nice place to do that. All right, right there. And uh, color density, I do like rich colors and I prefer using color density over um, color saturation. If anything, I pull back a little bit on this rather than keeping it at 100. I'm going to keep it at 100 this time because we haven't really got a ton of color going on here. And I am going to boost that intensity up to 20 here. Coming down. Color head, this is where we do our color grading within the plugin. So the way Dehancer handles film grain is one of the things that sets it apart from other film emulation software. There's no other plugin that I know of really that handles this part of it 
like the Hanser does. It really integrates well into the footage and it does really give you a realistic film grain. I'm not sure really what's going on in the background, but it's really impressive how realistic this film grain is. Here you've got several profiles you can choose from but you can also choose custom which gives you that sort of granular control over the film grain haha <laughs> granular control over film grain and i'm just going to go with the one of the profiles here i'm going to go with the iso uh, 500 you can still play with the amount here as well now halation so halation is a term so commonly thrown around now uh, especially on youtube uh, halation is that reddish fringe you get between the contrasting areas between highlights and shadow. I was seeing halation and I, I understood the phenomenon, but I didn't know it was called halation until much later. And um, I was mixing halation up with other things, but halation is that sort of reddish fringe that you get in those high contrast areas. Again, it's another area where Dehancer really excels. It gives you very realistic halation effects. You don't want to go too crazy with this. It's going to look unrealistic otherwise. So you've got the choice of enabling and disabling any of these things here. So I'm not going to bother enabling things like color head here because I'm not going to make any changes outside what Dehancer is doing by default here. A bloom. Bloom is um, something that I like to add in certain cases. In this particular instance, we do have things like this display over here. If I turn on the bloom, um, you can see that it brightens things up a little bit. Yeah, you can see how things get a little bit crazy. I'm just going to bring that down to 50. Um, actually, I'm just going to turn that off. We don't need uh, bloom for this. Film damage. This is one of the newer features. I'm actually going to turn this on. Uh, and I'm going to leave it at... Um, Let's see, I'm gonna go to, I think I'm gonna go to 20 here on that. So the film damage is self-explanatory. You're gonna get little um, defects uh, attributed to dust and scratches and things like that. Uh, I'm just gonna keep this at 20 and, and stick with the profile here. Again, we can go more granular with the changes and uh, go to custom. So you get a lot of control over that for like hairs and scratches and things like that. But I'm just going to stick with the, um, the profile here for 35 mil film and uh, film breath um, this is you'll see in certain areas of an image uh, flickering that is one of those things that your subconscious picks up uh, you don't want to go uh, too nuts with this but you do have the uh, ability to go into custom settings with this as well for more granular control I'm going to stick with the profile here uh, I will enable it though uh, gate weave um, I'm going to add a little bit of it in there too. I'm not going to go too crazy with this. Uh, I'm just going to put it at 50. Uh, overscan. Overscan is another new thing that they've added into Dehancer. Overscan is when you zoom into an image to get rid of the frame and the sprocket holes in the film. I'm going to just turn overscan on. So rather than overscan, this is actually... Uh, under scan, <laughs> but, um, but you get the idea anyway. I'm gonna turn that off, I don't need that. Right, so moving on. Vignette, self-explanatory. I actually like adding a little bit of vignette. This of course, in the real world, depends on the, um, the optic that you're using, the lens that you're using. I'm gonna turn down the exposure just so I can see my changes a little bit easier, and I'm gonna turn down the feather as well so I can see the changes. Very pronounced circle in the middle. And I'm going to change the size and then I'm going to soften it and then I'm going to bring the exposure back up a little bit. Uh, monitor, here we've got things like false color and clipping. I know that this is properly exposed so I don't really need these but they're there if you need them. So output is a global control over the entire effect that Dehancer has over your image. Now I wouldn't use this for well anything really <laughs> because if I wanted to go in and adjust anything I would do it within these but output is there as a global adjustment if you want to use it but personally I wouldn't touch it. So a LUT generator is something they've added to save a little bit of time so if you've got multiple clips where you're adding the same settings in Dehancer you can create a LUT. Now the reason Dehancer isn't a LUT in the first place is because lookup tables are lookup tables. You're not necessarily going to get the control that you want by just dumping a, um, a LUT on your footage. I 
probably won't use that either. Here we've just got quality options. I'm just going to go high, slow. I almost, regardless of the software, I always pick the highest quality. So there you go. I'm gonna show you how that looks. So those very observant, eagle-eyed people out there uh, may have noticed that some of these talking head segments that I do, they look a little bit dreamy. Uh, it's because I've been using Black Promise as well as uh, Tip and Glimmer Glass to kind of soften up some of my features because, you know, uh, I'm not getting any younger over here. <laughs> uh, but I've stopped using those and I don't think that I'll be using those for my projects either because the emulation in the Enhancer uh, Pro 7 is just so good. Uh, the bloom and halation, things like that, you can accomplish those so easily and so accurately. Now in the software, I really like the job that they did with all of that stuff and all those things that I had mentioned, uh, the way the Enhancer handles film grain and all those little details. Those are all things that uh, contribute to the film look. I think one of the major things though that contributes to the film look still is the way you shoot things. And often the way you shoot something um, is what contributes the most in my opinion to a cinematic or filmic sort of look. But the answer certainly goes a long way to accomplish that look. As usual, I hope you guys got something out of this one. If so, consider leaving me a thumbs up. If not, that's okay too. If you wanna make sure you don't miss any of these in the future, please consider subscribing and turning on those notifications. If you've got any ideas for future shows, please leave those in the comments below. Until next time, keep working and making your chosen idea a reality. Peace.